So our first question is from Donald. And Donald asks a simple question. Deadlift? And there's a little bit more. Your thoughts on deadlift conventional age 63. At this point, I train around the deadlift. Uh, for example, uh, good mornings, rows, uh, Romanian deadlifts, pull-ups, and heavy kettlebell swings. I still have a decent pull. Years of power cleans and snatches from back in my throwing and judo days. Oh, that's cool. I did uh, judo as a child. The only only sport I was ever a natural in. Uh, of course, being the youngest of six and having you know five boys in a family probably helped a little bit. Uh, you you fight a lot as a kid and a thrower. It's good to see that. Uh, my concern is risk reward, which is always the thing. Just wanting your thoughts on pulling. He Heavy into your 60s. On occasion, I work up to a raw uh, overhand, 315 for threes, uh, three to five sets. Well, that's a, okay, so here's a million dollar question. Are there exercises you should stop doing after a certain age? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I mean, it'd be nice to have like, uh, uh, I mean, I'd like some more feedback. Uh, this would make a good template. So as I'm, Speaking today, I'm preparing myself for an Olympic lifting meet this Sunday. And of course, the question is, you know, when people usually look at exercises, they're usually like the Olympic lifts, the snatch and the clean and jerk. are like, oh, that's that's too much this, that's too much that. You know, it's too ballistic. You know, those deep positions are bad for you. You know, you, it has huge demands on mobility, flexibility, fast twitch, uh, technique. Uh, you need to really plan out your training. You need to juggle it with... Uh, body weight issues, and boom, stop right there. You just explain why Olympic lifting through one's whole career is so good. You need to have mobility, flexibility, fast twitch, uh, explosive work. You need to have technique. You need to, you know, vary your loads and intensity over time. You got to be concerned about your body weight uh, because that's the sport. And so what I'm trying to get to you here on your answer here, Donald, is um, when you start to unpack and with the new Daniel Craig uh, Green Onion, as we start to take the layers off of this weightlifting onion, uh, I think it, I think it would be kind of complex. Uh, so you you're doing kettlebell swings. Well, I think done correctly, kettlebell swings is one of the greatest exercises you can do. You know, if you truly get into an actual hinge and finish with a vertical plank and throw that weight back down. Hinge, plank, hinge, plank, hinge, plank. You know, boy, uh, I love the way my hamstrings feel after the 10,000 swing challenge. Uh, I kind of wish I'd have known how to do the, the the modern correct kettlebell swing when I played football because my hamstrings used to always tighten up so much uh, in double sessions. It really cut into my speed, which I needed. Uh, but I now that I understand uh, the motion better, I, I have looser Loser. Uh, my hamstrings are much more appropriately flexible with a feeling of looseness when I use them now versus when I was younger. Now, I probably was much faster when I was younger, but uh, yeah, but now I, I feel a little bit more, you know, kind of linked and tied in, which leads us to a good question. So if you're getting these wonderful flexibility benefits from the kettlebell swing, what about the deadlift? Is a deadlift a bad exercise? No. In fact, I, I, I do like the idea of deadlifting, uh, but with an asterisk. I think the standard powerlifting meat deadlift, you know, with the, the mixed grip, um, is great for powerlifting meets. And, and I think that's the way you need to go. But if you use the tool of deadlifting with the tool of the barbell, I think you get a lot out of it. I like rack deadlifts. That's where you put the weight. Now you can do it with pads, uh, boards, or a rack. You put the weight either one inch below the knee or one inch above the knee, you know, kind of rubbing the patella tendon or, you know, just clearing the kneecap. I like rack deadlifts a lot. I like when the heels together, that's sometimes called the duck deadlift. We used to call it frog stance, but you know, I guess, you know, things change. Um, I love thick bar deadlifts. I, so. Oh, and there are new grips you can put, you can just buy that you, you can put them in your gym bag that you just pop them on. Uh, I don't want to say any brand names because they might not be in business anymore, but I had a pair of those um, 
before I had thick bars and I, I thought there was real value. Uh, so what's the value of the deadlift? Well, you know, 150 years ago, I think it was called the health lift. And really the deadlift is one of those things uh, I think Pavel would agree with me. I think Phil Maffetone would agree with me. You know, if, if all you could do was one exercise, what would you pick? You know, a lot of us would kind of, you know, like Pavel in the book, uh, Power to the People. Uh, it's, who can, it's right there. It's somewhere in there. Um, now I'm looking, oh, it's right there. I knew it. I'd see it right as I turned. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, doesn't matter, does it? You know, he says that 90% of your benefits from the weight room will come from the, the, the deadlift. Um, I think that's, you know, I mean, not, it, that's fine. I mean, it could be, it could be good, could be bad. It could be right, could be wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, the deadlift is a marvelous exercise. I Let's just go down the line then. Okay, so push. Uh, I think from uh, womb to tomb, uh, any vertical press is good. Uh, I think, in fact, I can't recommend enough putting weights, you know, the military press, the whole family of, you know, one arm, two arm presses, the whole family. Bench press, uh, horizontal pressing, I get a little bit against. It does bother a lot of people's shoulders long term. And any kind, you, anytime you get stiff through here, I worry long term about your posture. Uh, for poles, I like vertical pulls. Uh, I, li I like the pull up, the chin up, the neutral grip. Um, I think there's great value in uh, we, the lat machine variations. Uh, yeah, uh, again, done correctly, done intelligently. They're all very good. Horizontal pulling, I always struggle with. That's why I like suspension trainers uh, with the, the T, the Y, the I, the single arm row. When you come to the hinge family, Boy, I'd love to see a swing from uh, your whole career. I think deadlifts have value. Uh, when it comes to squat, I think the movement of squatting is important. That's why the goblet squat is so important. That's why I like the overhead squat so much. The front squat and uh, back squat certainly are wonderful, but you know, as you age, you know, I'd prefer to see a. I'd prefer to see you keep working your mobility and flexibility which will make the front squat and the overhead squat kind of move to the top. But for most people, it's the hips that we need work on. That's why I would have the goblet squat. The darn, the darn thing about the, um, the back squat is that a lot of people, you know, put the bar in certain places that are, you know, help. They'll raise your squat number up, but I'm not sure it really helps you, uh, you know, moving couches and, you know, being athletic. So it's a good question. Um, oh, um, oh, I almost forgot loaded carries. Loaded carries, uh, do them. Uh, suitcase carries now become my favorite. It'll change in a year. And, you know, I like farmer walks. I like suitcase carries, uh, sled poles, uh, prowlers. I, I like all of that for any age as much as you can. Um, so I think you have to think more that way. Think push, pull, hinge, squat, loaded carry. Sit down and go. Hmm, you know, what are the benefits of this exercise and, and what are the risks? Um, the bench press is the only exercise that kills. Uh, every so often you hear about someone, you know, killing themselves at a home gym or um, a friend of mine at, at, uh, in college dropped the weight on his face and he was strong. It was a lot of damage. Uh, and I think it affected him long term with a lot of other issues. So, you know, I mean, when I do my perfect workout, that's half kneeling presses, hangs, uh, hip thrusts, um, the gobble squat, overhead squat combo, and the suitcase carry. Uh, the reason I, I like that workout so much for where I'm at in my life is I do that five days a week, and the whole workout is designed to give me a little hypertrophy in the shoulders and you know probably the glutes or something like that. But every single exercise, you know, kind of puts me back in a position I want to be in. So what I want you to think about, Donald, is when you're go you're getting into this, you know, just add 20 years to your age, and what do you want to look like and feel like 20 years from now, and then you work it back. And by the way, deadlifts will fit no matter what you want to do uh, 20 years from now. But you know, kind of look at exercises as, is this something I can do? You know, three days a week, 
you know, for the next 20 years. And I think there's value in this the thought process. Uh, that's one of the reasons I always keep a journal because it gives, it allows me to go back and look and say, good idea, bad idea. Good question. Thank you. I appreciate that.